Switching sports because we have breaking news that will potentially impact the college football playoff. Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh is prohibited from being on the sideline until the conclusion of the regular season by the Big Ten, sources tell ESPN's Pete Thamel. This discipline is in response to the in-person scouting and ongoing sign-stealing investigation that Michigan is facing. Now that Harbaugh will be allowed to coach during the week, Afterward, no, during the games, he will not. Will Bond, what is your instant reaction to this? <sighs> this is an overreaction. But, look, they, it's, there's no question Michigan broke some rules here. My, my thing is the rules are nonsense about scouting. So you can call up your buddies in another team and not only get information that you've gleaned about that team from just having played them, but share it with other teams, yet you can't pay a scout to go. This is nonsense. But let me give Brian some credit. We were talking during the break. <laughs> Michigan has never been a sympathetic entity. You're talking to a Buckeye here. But and you're, <laughs> you're talking to, you're talking to a, a Buckeye and a Big Ten, a Big Ten guy. And I, I am against this. But this is going to drive Jim Harbaugh out of He's college been football. suspended for six of the games this year. I, yes. But Michigan's still the, probably the best team in the Big Ten. And Michigan's the only chance that the Big Ten has of winning the college football playoff this year. So really, so the Big Ten is going to cut off its nose to spite its face here? I, I'm stunned at this. The amount of money that this could, could, could swing. But let me just say this real quickly. That team is going to have to rally, and I think they will, starting this weekend at Penn State. They're the best team in the conference. Brian? You watch this closely. You agree? Yes. As a Buckeye, I'm sorry to say. Ohio State soccer ball block him. And he joins us now live. ESPN senior college football writer Pete Thamel uh, breaking and confirming the news as he joins us from Athens, Georgia. Pete, what more can you tell us about the suspension? Well, Hannah, I, I think there's a few things uh, moving forward here. One is that the, the Big Ten's decision today was not one that it took lightly. Uh, they've, get, they've just tweeted out some reasoning um, in, in the last few minutes, and I think this passage is important. Uh, enforcing the sportsmanship policy with appropriate discipline this season in light of the university's established violations this season is thus of the utmost importance to protect the reputation of the conference and its member institutions. So basically, the Big Ten is saying they're there was enough evidence that they received from the NCAA that disrupted competition during this year amid a Michigan's alleged illicit sign stealing scheme that they felt the, the need to punish Michigan this season. So Jim Harbaugh will not be on the sideline for the next three games unless the second part of this comes, Hannah, and there is some sort of legal injunction in the next 20 hours before they kick off against Penn State on Saturday. Right, and given that this is a holiday and the legalities involved, uh, what's the potential here for Michigan to respond? Well, all week, and again, this story just broke 10 minutes ago, but all week Michigan had indicated and lawyers around Michigan had indicated that they would fight a ruling against Jim Harbaugh like this. And the steps that would take place if they did indeed do that would be to attempt to get a temporary restraining order, a TRO, as they as they call it, in legalese. They are able to do that, at least get a hearing for it, on Veterans Day, even though the courts are closed. They are expected to go to the Washington, I believe, I may be mispronounced that, county court, uh, state circuit courthouse in Ann Arbor. That's the expected venue. Uh, Nebraska actually sued the Big Ten. Eight players did in 2020 when they canceled the season. They went to a local court as well. So that may be instructive for the plan of how Michigan moves forward in this. Uh, but yeah, there is still uh, this is obviously huge news, Hannah, but there still could be more huge, huge news because it's unknown whether Jim Harbaugh will be on that sideline in state college. And that's going to ultimately be determined by a judge. We did see a little while ago he did board that bus with his team to begin that journey. Uh, so we don't know at what point uh, we will have any further news on this. Uh, we'll keep it posted with you. Penn State, then that's followed by a game at Maryland. And, of course, uh, OSU is at Ann Arbor at the end of the season. Pete Thamel, thank you. Quickly, Jen, we go from the sideline to the courts as the fate of Michigan in its national championship caliber season 
is in flux. And as we know, Michigan already in Happy Valley for that game against Penn, Penn State. I guess we'll find out if, in fact, he will be on the sidelines or if he will be watching from afar. He is Pete Thamel. I'm also joined here on College Football Live by Desmond Howard and Stanford Steve. Des, let's go to your first. You, your reaction to the punishment that has been handed down to Michigan and falls on the shoulder, it seems, of Well, guys, it's, it's kind of anti-climactic, you know what I mean? It's like we kind of knew it was coming. It was just a matter of when, not if. And everyone's been preparing for us. There's no big Big surprise. I think that you look at um, the commissioner and his statement and what he's put out there. The, it's kind of the hypocrisy is what, what grabs me, Steve. You know, it's like if it's Michigan, it's sign stealing. If it's someone else, it's sign decoding. If it's Michigan, it's in-person scouting. If it's someone else, it's coaches sharing information from the goodness of their hearts. So the whole thing, man, and when rea in reality, it's a distinction without difference to me. I look at the timing. The timing of what when and this happened. As a player, you know when you get our itinerary for the week, you know exactly when that plane is to leave to go play 100%. that game, right? Yeah. Somebody had to know when that plane was leaving. Right. And then, Pete, correct me if I'm wrong, they got the news when they were on the plane headed to Penn State. Seemingly. I'm not sure how long the flight is. I was told they were wheels up around 3, and I think we that, broke the story around 3.40. And, and that's that's what I look at. Is, 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 is You knew what, what the possibilities were, and you waited till that time. And then as far as the suspension, yeah, I think it is too harsh. I, I, I do. And, and when you look at it and what's at stake, and like you said, everybody knew what something was coming, but the timing of it all yeah. is what really, really bothers me. Is there any distinction, however, as Pete mentioned, Des, you have played this game, obviously, with a coach being on the sideline, not being on the sideline, rather, but being able to coach his team throughout the week. So when J.J. McCarthy threw three interceptions um, against Bowling Green State, mm -hmm. I told my son, you got to understand, head coaches make their money on Saturday. That's when they add the most value to a team. So to answer your question, to pull him off the sidelines for the Penn State game, for the Maryland game, and for the Ohio State game, it's, um, it's, it's a shot at the players. It really is. So, my, like, I'm just so disappointed. I feel for the players. Like, these kids, work, they work their butt off. You're a former player. You yep. understand exactly what it is. They don't deserve this. I did get up earlier this morning with um, Greg McElroy, and he came up with a, 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 a punishment that – would not punish the players in the process, but you still can punish Jim Harbaugh in the program. So my, that's, my heart just goes out to the players. They've been dealing with so much from the beginning of the season when the NCAA came out them, but we all know it was a level two violation, yeah. which is a slap on the wrist. They didn't like the way Harbaugh dealt with them. So they said, damn it, because we got the authority, we're going to bump it up to a level one, and we want you to get four games. So then... They had to lose him for three games for that. And now at the end of the season, they, they have to lose him for another three games? How can you not feel for those student athletes, those players who put everything into this season? They're one of the best teams in the country right now. And they have to deal with this type of mess. So a couple yeah. points of clarification for Steve on the timing. Michigan was initially given till Tuesday to respond. They asked for an extra day until Wednesday. They gave long, lengthy legal responses. And the Big Ten, if you read the 13-page document, had to take their time. You just can't, you just can't take a 10-page yeah. response and then Harbaugh's response and do it right away. So that's a little bit of an explanation of the timing. And then Desmond mentioned the other Big Ten schools that were in – some sort of sign, as you said, decoding scheme. And the Big Ten addressed that very specifically, Desmond. They said oh, he's, he's the university the also I need argues to get my laptop out here. that because, because <laughs> Michigan <laughs> believes that others are engaged in decoding signs, there must be nothing wrong with the university's activities. In addition to impermissible activities of others being currently unsupported by facts, the university's culpability is not dependent on the actions of they other institutions. They said it wasn't supported by facts? Correct. Was, I thought Michigan had well, receipts. They, okay. they I, I, are saying... We, we, we can't go back and forth because I got my laptop. Yeah. Well, they have, so I, I'm they at have a the receipts. Uh, but I got the, the gun, I got the, the knife. The language here, and again, this is like vetted legal language. This yeah, isn't, exactly. This isn't some, yeah. They say the scheme occurred, and just because Michigan offered procedural and technical arguments designed to delay accountability doesn't mean they should. So essentially, yeah. they are saying this isn't an alleged scheme. Right. This happened. 
and they have NCAA documents to prove it, and they think Michigan got a schematic advantage. The players, as you said, got a schematic advantage early this year. Yeah. So the Big Ten's rationale is that Michigan should be punished in some way, and they feel like the fair way, I was told throughout this process, the players would not be harmed. Yeah. The players well, they, would be suspended. Harmed, they wouldn't they just they wouldn't gave Penn State games. a schematic advantage too. Well, I mean, that's, gave, that, I mean, that's exactly the point, yeah, Desmond. Exactly what they did. Michigan had one from Connor no. Stallions, yeah. and now Penn State has one uh, with, with, without oh, Jim so Harbaugh. That's how we do unless, it. In, yeah, I yeah, mean, it's a punishment okay. for the crime. Yeah. So Coach Mark Stoops literally just joins us from practice. Coach, it's always great to see you. Appreciate it. I, and I, I do not intend to, to quiz you uh, on yeah. the specificity of the Harbaugh situation, yeah. but I am curious about something. Um, this is a funny question, being asking a head coach. Yeah. They're rem the head coach being removed from the actual game but having prepared the team all week. Um, impact? Definitely. Uh, definitely an impact. I think uh, the nice thing that Michigan has going for them is they have such a strong team. They have great coaches. Uh, you know, Coach Harbaugh, I'm sure, has done a remarkable job leading them. And, and I'm sure that team will go fight for him, you know, because – uh, those players have done nothing wrong. I don't know the ins and out of that. Um, you know, I think for their sake, uh, just hearing what you had to say right there, it'll be good to get that over with, move it, you know, move past it. I know that team has big aspirations. They've done a remarkable job. So in a way, hopefully, uh, you know, they'll serve that uh, suspension and move past it. Not, not to lessen the importance of a head coach. I mean, those of us yeah. in the media, we obsess on head coaches. Sure. Um, but... It, is preparation, I mean, I know there are many things that happen during game, but, but the, w w would you weigh the preparation, the game plan, the execution to the, the actual start uh, in terms of uh, how important that is versus what happens once you get there? I would. Yeah, I would say if you had to put it one or the other, I think the week of preparation, the messaging, the team being right and being prepared um, and ready for those situations, uh, you know, would be the most important. I mean, obviously, you know, there's there's game time decisions and hey, we're not always right, you know, and, and if people always ask me in hindsight, would you do it different? I'd be like, heck, yeah, I would, you know, if I knew the, <laughs> knew the outcome. But, uh, you know, I'm sure they're going to be prepared and ready to go. And it, it is, I will say this, if it came down and he didn't know it and, it and it and it would hit me like right now, walking off the practice field on a Friday right before a game, that is definitely something you have to adjust to. And, uh, and I, I, I apologize for obsessing over this, but, I, but I'm so interested in, in your perspective. I mean, he, he is literally on a plane. He's about to land. It's only the biggest game of the year f for them. They'll have a bigger they, one. Who do they play? They're Penn, uh, Penn State. Oh, yeah. That is a big deal. Yeah. That, that, that's, uh, that's different. I mean, we haven't seen that. No. Any, anything like this. You've been covering it for a Never. long time. No, that's... Uh, you know, for me, just hearing it, I mean, yeah, that's shocking. That would be, that would be tough. While they were flying to Penn State, wearing shirts that said Michigan versus everybody, this has turned into a drama on top of a soap opera, on top of so many things, Courtney Cronin. How does it all land for you? Just like the first suspension that Jim Harbaugh had, the first three games of the season, obviously these opponents coming up with Penn State, Maryland, and Ohio State are a little different than him not being there on the sidelines for East Carolina, UNLV, yeah. and Bowling Green. But I think that Tony Petini, Petiti came down – with this ruling based on the pressure he was feeling from other coaches in the Big Ten, other administrators wanting to use that sportsmanship guys to hand down a punishment but not do something that was so aggressive that Michigan in the middle of the season would be filing a lawsuit against the Big mm -hmm. Ten. It's already a really bad look uh, where the conference is right now, eight months into Tony, Tony Petiti's uh, reign as Big Ten commissioner. He's got to rein this thing in. I think he felt pressure to act before the NCAA's investigation was up. And you're going to get a lot of people complaining that due process was not achieved here. We got a lot of experts on that all of a sudden within the last three weeks since this investigation was first opened up. But with 18 schools, with, this, with the conference expanding to 18 schools next year, Tony Petiti's really got to pull the reins in on all of this backbiting that's been going on between institutions before it expands to a conference over four times. So you're okay with... A conference making a ruling here and not the greater governing body of the NCAA. David Dennis Jr., I'll ask you that exact question now. Now, this feels like an exercise in doing things in the least effective way possible down to the fact that they dropped this ruling late and the team is in the air getting yeah. the news via Twitter. Like, that's just not 
how you do something like this. As uh, Courtney mentioned, this is about pressure from the other schools and the other coaches and maybe even feeling that you need to punish Harbaugh before he goes off to the NFL. But either case, this sets a bad precedent. Like, we can look at what Harbaugh did and see the evidence on social media and say, yeah, this guy was doing something wrong with the sign stealing. But there's going to come a case down the line where things are a lot more murky, where there's a lot less evidence, and you cannot move past the NCAA's investigation and have a suspension of your own without getting through all of the uh, investigator that you need. This is just a bad precedent, and it's a, you know, just a least effective way to find out what's wrong and what's right and to act on it. Who's the day from the Big Ten? Frank Isola on Michigan having Coach Jim Harr suspended for the next three games, yeah. but he can coach during the week, but not during the weekend on the sidelines. <laughs> Yeah, I, like a lot of people, we roll our eyes at the self-importance and the arrogance of Michigan football. But I have nothing against the program. I like the head coach. I think the commissioner of the Big Ten is well within his right to do what he did. And let's be fair here. I think for Michigan and for Jim Harbaugh, it works out. Really, you want to be with the team during the week. And Courtney mentioned it. A lot of these athletic directors, they felt, they felt the punishment should be he cannot coach the team during the week, much less on game day. So I think all in all for Michigan, I don't think it's the worst thing. If he's going to be there – for a possible Big Ten championship game, and maybe they make the college football playoff, I think it, in the end it works out for Jim Harbaugh Michigan. And Lindsay Theory. It's definitely not the worst thing for Michigan, but what a circus for the conference. They say the investigation's ongoing, so is this a fitting punishment? Is it not a fitting, fitting punishment? That is the biggest question I have about everything that's going on. I think this is a premature decision on their part. No matter if it feels like a light punishment, I, to Courtney's point, it is most important for that coach to be there Monday through Friday, Saturday. He can hand over the reins. They can prepare for that all week. So what does this really change for Michigan? Not a whole lot mm -hmm. other than okay. their head guy's not on the side line so that's where I stand on this and they just should wait for the entire investigation to play out it's silly to give a half punishment or maybe a full punishment for nothing uh, at the midway point of anything Courtney Cronin back in remember the NCAA's investigation has yet to conclude although they've been operating by their standards at warp speed. I used to intern at the NCAA, and they did not move this fast. Is that right? Any of the I, how did we not know that? that? At, Inside information. Okay. The more you know. Yeah. Um, they, they don't operate this quickly, so very clearly they felt the pressure to feed this information, share this information with the Big Ten, which feels like even they were trying to steer Tony Petiti in the direction of coming down with some sort of ruling. This kind of feels like the happy medium where Petiti doesn't want to overstep but felt compelled to do something in this Frank manner. Isola. This is not the greatest whodunit mystery of all time. Investigation, give me a break. The guy was caught red-handed. <laughs> I love The Frank. athletic directors uh, want yeah, the guy yeah, suspended. <laughs> I, think if you're, I think if you're Michigan, first of all, the Big Ten is protecting itself right here. Everyone wanted them to do something. They did it. If he wants to play out legally, go right ahead. The NCAA wants to do their thing, go right ahead. We made a decision. Not everyone's going to be happy, but we did David something. David Dennis Jr., I, I just don't get this this process where everybody's happy and people feel bad. Either you did something wrong and you're mm -hmm. putting out a punishment or you didn't and you are not guilty. It's like you can't get in the middle of that. But we begin today with the Big Ten's punishment of Michigan for allegedly stealing signals via in-person advanced scouting. The conference today found the team in violation of the rules and has banned Jim Harbaugh from games through the end of the regular season, though he will be allowed to coach the team during the week. Well, but unbeaten Michigan plays 10th-ranked Penn State tomorrow at Penn State and then top-ranked Ohio State in two weeks. What do you think of the Big Ten's punishment and why? Well, Tony, you know, this whole time, we've been talking about this pretty much every day, either on this show or you and I via text or phone conversations, and I think it's a little on the extreme side. And, I, and I'm not in denial about what Harbaugh and Michigan did. The notion that he didn't know, I, I don't know that I'm buying that at all. But regardless of that, Tony, I, the, the notion of stealing signals rising to the point where it could be so important that you could suspend the coach, the head coach of the, of the, of the best team in the Big Ten during a Big Ten football season and he not be on the sideline tomorrow. Because unlike the earlier self-imposed penalty, you know, where Harbaugh – you know, it, and it was self-imposed, could be involved to an extent. He would not be, again, on the sideline tomorrow at Penn State. Now, 
There can be injunctive relief. We could have things happen yeah. between now and kickoff that would allow Jim Harbaugh to be on the sideline. But my mind automatically jumps ahead. One, I think the team will rally both at Penn State and wherever else Jim Harbaugh is not allowed to work if it comes to that. I believe this Michigan State, this Michigan team is the best team in the conference, and they will rally to this point. And, Tony, I think it's over for Jim Harbaugh in college football. These are his peers. The coaches and the athletic directors of mm -hmm. the Big Ten have done this to Jim Harbaugh. It's, it's time to go, and I would think the NFL would be the place he'd have to go. So you and I agree on one and we disagree on another. The one we disagree on, my first reaction to this, was I think it will hurt Michigan in its pursuit Ooh. of the national championship. Okay. I think not having Harbaugh on the sidelines will definitely hurt them. Two, I think that Harbaugh has just become much more attractive to the NFL than he was three hours ago. Okay? Yeah. And people are going to figure he's going to be gone. My third reaction, though, is to me the most important one. They better have direct linkage that Jim Harbaugh knew about these signals being stolen. They yeah. better have direct testimony or they better have physical evidence on a phone linking him to this. Because if they don't and they are singling him out and not the school, not the team, not the assistant coaches who may have benefited from stolen signals. If they're doing that, I think that is ridiculous, ridiculously unfair. We are obviously going to see a lawsuit. They're going to try and get an injunction. It is possible that a judge might say, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not stepping in here because you're in a private association, the Big Ten, with your own rules. And I don't have purview over this, but I suspect if they do it in Ann Arbor, someplace like that, they will get relief. I am sort of surprised that they allowed Harbaugh and the entire team to go to Penn State. I mean, we were hearing all day this was well, going was to be announced already. in the early afternoon. And it yeah. wasn't announced in the early afternoon. It's the meat of the story now, and I appreciate that part. But unlike you, Mike, I, I think it hurts them for the national championship. I do. I, Tony, Tony, maybe, maybe it will. I, I'm, I, again, I'm not looking all the way to the national championship. I think it, it will be fine for them at Penn State. I think they will rally and yeah. beat the daylights out of Penn State. I think they can beat Ohio State the same way. They're better in the games in Ann Arbor. Now, I'm not Maybe. going beyond that. Look, I don't know what the CFP they've been better than every other like team. and what that will bring. When this story broke, they've played two mm -hmm. games since. They beat Michigan State 49-0. Well, they beat Purdue 41-13. So teams. they, have, they haven't been hurt by the deliberate leaks that we have not seen. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. yeah.